So let's get our components set up for the mole mash game we're going to create. And as you've already learned in the course, the first thing you want to place onto the components viewer is a canvas. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're going to rename our canvas right away. And we'll just name that my canvas. Now we're going to specify a width and height of 300 pixels. And remember how you do that is go to the width, hit the pixels radial button and enter 300. And we're going to do the same thing with the height. Next we're going to grab a label component, drag it onto the viewer, we'll rename this, and we'll call it score label. Now we're going to go ahead and change the text that will actually show up in the label, and how you do that is going to the properties section. We'll just type the word score and a colon. And we'll go ahead and grab our last visible component for a little bit, and that will be a button. And we'll rename this button. We'll call it the reset button. And then we're going to change the text of the button to reset. And that is a little bit small for my liking, so I'm going to go ahead and change the font size to 20. But whether you do that or not is completely up to you. Next, we're going to add a couple of non-visible components. First, we're going to go to the media drawer and pull out a sound component. If you remember all the way back to our Hello Purr and Android Zoo apps, the sound component will allow you to add a sound effect. And in this case, we're just going to rename this noise so that when the mole is hit, we're going to hear a noise. And lastly, we're going to go back to the basic palette and we're going to find a clock component. It's another non-visible component. We will rename this component Mole Timer. And with our clock component, which we've called Mole Timer, we want to change the timer interval for starters to 500. Now remember when you take a look at the timer interval, this is in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds equals one second. So 500 milliseconds is going to equal half a second. And we want to make sure that our timer enabled checkbox is checked, and it is by default. And the last component we're going to place in this video is a new one. We haven't discussed this yet in the course. We'll go to the animation drawer, and we're going to pull out what's called an image sprite. And we can pull this out and place it anywhere we want to on the canvas. I'm just going to place it right there. Before we go any further, I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to call it Mole. This is where we're going to upload the image of the mole for our game. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and do that. I've already got our mole picture uploaded here, but in the course it's labeled as mole.png. So I'll go ahead and click that and we'll add it in there. Now we see that our picture of a mole shows up. Now let's go to the properties section for our mole. I want to cover two more things before we're done with this video. And one is to show you that the mole shows up indented under the canvas here. That means it's a subcomponent of the canvas itself. That's exactly what we want, so that's perfect. Now if we go over to the properties section, you want to make sure it is enabled. You want that box to be checked. You want the heading to be zero. The interval doesn't matter at all because the mole is going to be moved by other means. And we've already got our picture here. We want rotates to be checked. We want our speed to be 0.0. .0. We want visible to be checked. And we see X and Y here. Um, what you're going to see is 52 under X and 193 over Y. And if I drag the mole around the screen, I want you to watch what happens to X and Y. Those automatically change depending on where you place the mole on the canvas. So you don't need to worry about filling those in. They're going to be filled in for you. Z, we're just going to leave as 1.0. And for the width and the height, we want to leave those as automatic. Automatic. 